Greetings, I welcome you to our worship service here at Bethel United Church of Christ in Evansville, Indiana. I'm Reverend Samuel Buer, and I'm pleased to say that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here in this place, here where we strive to be united in seeking God's will and in serving all people. So we welcome all who are worshiping with us this morning as well as those that are joining with us online this day. I have a couple announcements and I'm going to turn one over for a backpack blessing. Uh, while uh, she's coming up, uh, we're doing a couple things. One is uh, if you're new to us, you'll see that we have uh, the Christmas display up here. Through every July, we do a Christmas in July kind of a theme uh, as we are uh, yoked with uh, Stockwell Elementary School is one of our mission partners. And as school, as they're getting ready for kids to, to come back to school, one of the things that we do is we collect all kinds of, of school supplies because many of the children don't have, or moms and dads don't have the money to buy the supplies. And so that's one thing that we do here is support them. And so I, and there's a list in the bulletin and, there, and there's things in the pew in the pews, so I'd invite you to be generous if you want to participate in that offering. Which helps us realize that school is actually starting, which to me just kind of blows my mind. Summer has gone so fast. But we are gearing up for blessing of the backpacks. So if you have a grandchild, a great-grandchild, that is going back to school, we would love to have their backpacks here on August 6th to bless them. I don't care whether you're a student, a teacher, you work in the cafeteria, we will bless your badge, we will bless your, your tote, whatever you have. Please bring it on August 6th and let us bless it before we start off this great school year. Thanks. Thank you, Sharon. Also, uh, uh, we've, we're in, also in the midst of a fundraising campaign for the roof that's on our gym, and so we'd encourage folks to be generous with that. Uh, that gym roof uh, needed badly needed a replacement as they, we had several, about four storms this year that tore some of the, uh, some, some of the shingles off, significant uh, portions of them. And so that has now been redone $58,000 later. And so we're trying to recoup. So if you, we'd encourage you to be generous. Also want to give thanks for those of our volunteers. Uh, we've been working with Habitat for Humanity, uh, this, uh, the United Church of Christ and the Disciples of Christ congregations get together every year uh, and do a build. And so yesterday I had the joy of uh, helping put siding on and I was working beside, uh, uh, working along with the young woman who is the, the homeowner and it was just a joy to hear her speak about choosing the colors of, of, the, of the siding and the cabinetry and the rooms, how excited she, she said, I'll be in this house in about a month and a half in September and how excited she was about that. So I want to thank for all those that volunteered for that. Also, today is the last day of James and the Giant Peach um, through Dream, Dream Street Studios. We have many ch young people here uh, throughout the summer, and there's a musical going on this afternoon at 2 o'clock in the gym. Uh, really well done. Invite, if you want to have a fun afternoon, come for that show at 2 o'clock this afternoon. The kids are doing a great, great job. With that in mind now, let us worship God uh, this day. Let's turn to the call to worship. We gather in the name of the living Christ to worship God. Surely God is in this place and calls us to worship in spirit and in truth. God's love is for you and for all people everywhere that we may share God's love and life. Renew us, O oh God, in the refreshing spirit of the living Christ. The living Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. I would invite those who are able to stand to sing as we sing, sing praise to God. You can find that music in our bulletin on page five. Let's 
And now please join me for the prayer of discipleship. We worship the God who inhabits our world and indwells our lives. We need not look up to find God. We need only to look around, within ourselves, beyond ourselves, into the eyes of another. We need not listen for a distant thunder to find God. We need only to listen of life, the words of children, the questions of the curious, the rhythm of a heartbeat. We worship the God who inhabits our world who indwells our lives. Now our, now our children's message. I'd like to invite any children or teenagers who are here to come up. If we have any this morning or not. We have a lot of people with childlike faith, though, don't we? We got one coming. <laughs> You can come on up and sit on the step here. <laughs> Would you rather sit on that step? No way. Oh. the gotcha for this little guy a year ago adopted, so not so little. <laughs> well, I have a question for you. Do you ever dream at night when you sleep? No? So you don't remember any of your dreams? No. No? Okay. Well, today's Bible lesson includes a really crazy dream. Um, and while you're learning about it, you're actually going to be making something at the same time. So I'm going to hand you this and just watch what I do. Well, leave it like that. Watch what I do and do the same thing. Okay? <laughs> All right, you ready? Okay, so I got mine just like you. There was a man in the Bible named Jacob. He had a dream about a ladder that reached up to heaven. And some translations say stairway to heaven. Jacob started on a long journey to a town called Haran. When Jacob reached a certain place, he stopped to spend the night. Jacob took a large stone and rested his head on it and went to sleep. Now, that doesn't sound very comfortable, does it? Yeah, I wouldn't want a stone. As he slept, Jacob had a dream. In Jacob's dream, there was a ladder that reached from the ground all the way up to heaven. You're doing good. <laughs> there were angels going up and down that ladder. God spoke to Jacob and told him that he was going to bless him and his people and that he would watch over them and keep them keep him wherever he went. When Jacob woke up, he said, surely the Lord is in this place. Then Jacob took that stone that he had used as a pillow and he poured oil on it and he named the place Bethel, which means the house of the Lord. And that's the name of our church, isn't it? So this is the house of the Lord. OK, 
Okay, one more. And then I'm going to give you a little piece of tape to hold the end of it. Oops, forgot about that, sorry. <laughs> I don't have a place to clip it. <laughs> All right, so here we go. I'm just going to do this like this. There you go. Now, don't do anything till I tell you, okay? <laughs> All right. So, this is a fun way to fold paper, and it's called Jacob's Ladder. So, look what happens when you pull it open, if I did it right, unless I did it wrong, which could be. Is your... Did, <laughs> sorry, I already have one made. <laughs> I don't know what I'd take wrong. Does yours open? Yes! Good! Yeah. So see, it looks like a little ladder that you could climb up, doesn't it? This is actually um, a very old... Uh, <laughs> it's back, actually a very old uh, way to fold paper. It's been around for many years and has been an entertaining toy for kids. It's also a story of how God blessed Jacob. But much more than that, it's also a picture of what Jesus has done for you and me. Jesus came down to earth to make a way for you and me to reach God in heaven. Jesus is that way. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for providing a ladder A stairway to heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let's go to chapel. You've heard a bit of the story. I'm going to be singing the song, We Are Climbing Jacob's Ladder. Uh, it's a black spiritual. If you listen to it, I was reading, I've been reading a book that my son got me at, for Christmas time, the, the 1619 Project. And in there I, w I was reminded really, or maybe learned for the first time, but more so I might say be, was reminded that many of these black spiritual songs were sung out underneath the trees or out in the fields. And they were songs of protest more often than not because they were protesting the white religion that was not allowing them into the church. So as you hear these words, we are climbing Jacob's ladder. Imagine, or imagine some enslaved folk singing it as a protest song, saying, we're gonna get to heaven despite you slave owners who won't allow us into the church. Or to, or to follow God in the way that you have done. So here we are climbing Jacob's Ladder. And by the way, if you're new to us, and you can't see it very well, but we're, we, we have it up on the screen, that's the window that's back in, up in the balcony, uh, Jacob's Ladder. And so that's Jacob there in the stone. Beth El, El Hebrew for God, Beth meaning home home of God, Bethel, and therefore again the name of our church, Bethel. We are climbing Jacob's ladder.
thine, give God a glory. Rise, shine, give God a glory. Rise, shine, give God a glory. Bearers of the cross. Amen. Our reading today comes from Genesis 28, verses 10 through 19. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a stairway set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head, and he set it up for a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz at the first. This is the word of God for us today. Let us bow our heads for a moment. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be found acceptable in thy sight. Lord God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As I was doing some research on the scripture, came across a couple of things I thought I'd like to be sure to share with you in terms of biblical uh, tradition or teachings. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We've often heard of it as a ladder. In Hebrew, the word that's been translated ladder also means ramp. Or if you think of it in Mesopotamia, where this story came from, a ramp was also, fancy word, ziggurat, a pyramid-shaped site, where at the top was where you worshiped God. So the ziggurat was that pyramid, and you had then steps going up that pyramid. That might be closer to the original than what we think of as a ladder. Also in Hebrew, the word that is interpreted, that often we take as meaning above, can also mean beside, has two different meanings. And one one of the things that the Hebrews took and brought in terms of faith was rather than thinking as God as always above or at the top of that pyramid, that ziggurat, but God is also beside us, with us. This God that walks with us. Think of that Garden of Eden story. 
of walking beside them. So with that in mind, preaching on this text today, but I also want to relate this text also to the book of Romans, which is another text for this day. And in, that, in the book of Romans, the writer speaks about those who live according to the flesh will die. Those that live according to the flesh will die, but those who are led by the Spirit will tr- truly live. So lay that now, lay that teaching right now on top of this, of this story about Jacob. And if you know the Jacob story, we only read a small piece of it. Jacob truly was one who lived according to the flesh the better part of his life. But fortunately, Romans doesn't leave us in that one place. Romans gives us some hope that if we're living in the flesh, God has some saving work to do for us, to offer to us, so there is hope for us that we may not, need not be left there. So I'm going to, starting there, now every Sunday when I start out the service, I say, I welcome you all and say, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. You are welcome here. If that's true, then we need to welcome everybody. No matter who they are, no matter where they've been, no matter where they are on life's journey. Now think of Jacob. Do you know anything about Jacob? Jacob's name means supplanter or maybe swindler. Jacob We know if you read earlier in the stories, right now he's sleeping out in the wilds where he had this dream because he's running from his brother Esau because he stole from Esau. He took Esau's heritage or inheritance. He took 90% of what his brother was to get. And his brother's angry. This is the Jacob that has, that is experiencing this ladder, this ramp, this experience with God, this holy time. Jacob wasn't alone in swindling. He swindled that from his father of all people. It wasn't just Esau, but he stole that from his father with his mother's help. How dysfunctional of a family can you get? But no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. So even the Jacobs of the world are welcome here. God has is something to do with what's going to come, with what's going to happen in Jacob's Life. I'm reminded in Jacob's story, I had a, a, a colleague in ministry, he became a conference minister, who would oftentimes say, this story, these Bible stories will never come alive for you until you realize it's your story. Too often we read these stories as we think, oh, that was a story of a biblical time long ago which is true. What's even more true is that these stories are our stories as well. In my life, I'm only going to draw out two of them, but I can name some others. Our next door neighbor, Delbert, I grew up on a farm. Delbert had the next neighboring farm. Growing up in those years, in the 50s and 60s and 70s, on these small 80-acre farms, you couldn't do it, manage it yourself. You couldn't afford all the equipment that you needed. So the farmers would band together and help each other, share equipment with each other. Brothers would band together. And he had a brother that lived about two miles down the road uh, adjacent to mom's farm. 
when mom died, Delbert found out that his brother had somehow conned mom into writing a will where he inherited everything and Delbert got nothing. Delbert didn't know that until they read the will. This is Jacob's story happening to my neighbors. Talk about a broken relationship after that. I never did hear how it turned out. Or I remember conducting a funeral one time of a fellow. He had been remarried, two sets, two different children in the family. Kids are now grown in their 40s or so. For some reason, I had to go back to the funeral home the following Monday after the funeral was over. And here's the fellow's wife sitting out in the car with her son. And out in the middle of the parking lot, what are you doing here? Oh, we brought the deceased son. He was from Florida. He didn't have a car, so they were taking him around. Well, he, had, he wanted to go to the funeral home. Says so he's inside trying to get the death certificates. Which she had. What? He's trying to get death certificates so he can get the money out of the bank before she does. Again, broken relationships. How many times, and those are fairly extreme ones, but think about it. The mistakes that you and I have made over time that have led to broken relationships. That's what's happening here with Jacob. But God has said, and we in the UCC have taken on, no matter where you are on your journey, you are welcome here. I'm not going to give up on you, says God. And God never gave up on Jacob. Now, the other part of Jacob's story was that time and time again, Jacob would say, God, if you do this thing for me, then I will do it for you, if then... Talk about a weak relationship with God. That's Jacob. No matter where you are on, that, in your, on your journey, Jacob's way at the beginning of this one. He's maybe not even on this journey of faith. But God broke in on him. And God didn't give up on Jacob. Jacob. And by the end of that night, that morning, Jacob was in a new place. And his faith was in a new place. God doesn't give up. God is like that mother who never quits caring. It's always there waiting for the opportune time to give that needed hug, that welcome home, that welcome home that makes all the difference in the world. So much so that Jacob could then say, this is a holy place where I've encountered God. And Jacob's story changed after that. I don't know where you're at on your journey of faith, but God isn't giving up on you and God hasn't given up on me, no matter where we've been or no matter what we've done. That's the wonderful good news of the gospel. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us sing now. Surely the presence of the Lord. I'd invite those who are able to stand as we sing.
We named a number of prayers, concerns at the beginning of the service. Let us keep those in mind as we go now into this prayer time. God of the seasons, God of the years, God of the eons, Alpha and Omega, before us and after us, you promise and we wait. We wait with eager longing. We wait amid doubt and anxiety. We wait with patience, thin and then doubt. And then we take life into our own hands. And we wait because you are the one and the only one. We wait for your peace and your mercy, for your justice and your good rule. Give us your spirit that we may wait obediently and with discernment, caring and without capacity, trustingly and without cynicism, honestly and without utopianism. Grant that our wait may be appropriate to your coming, soon and very soon, soon and not late, late but not too late. We wait while the world groans in eager longing. Let's now be in a time of silence as we offer our prayers to God. And now let us join in one voice in the prayer that binds us with Christians around the world and across the ages as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now dedicate the gifts of our time, our talents, and our treasures to God. Would you pray with me? O God, most merciful and gracious, of whose bounty we have all received, accept, we pray, this offering of your people, Remember in your love those who have brought it and for those whom it is given. And so follow it with your blessing that it may promote peace and goodwill among all people and advance the realm of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I would now invite, invite now those who are able to rise as we sing, leaning on the everlasting arms.
We turn now to the benediction. Go forth in joy. We go knowing that God's blessing is upon us. Go forth in love. We go ready and willing to live for the Lord. Go forth in hope. We go ready what God's doing and what we can accomplish knowing that God is with us. Go forth in peace. We depart carrying the peace of God with us. And as you depart, know this, that this service has ended, but your service now begins. And know that that peace of God is with you. Amen.